This is part two of our video on using Excel for a Monte Carlo simulation. In the last video we had introduced the basic idea of the video and set up our initial starting values. Next thing I want to do is note that we've got monthly contributions. We were looking at saving $600 per month over 30 years so we need to convert those monthly returns and our annual returns and annual standard deviations into monthly values. For returns, we simply take the 9% which is in B3 divided by 12 and that gives us 0 0.0075. Now while that will work for the Excel calculations, it doesn't really look nice. So for a formatting thing, what we can do is make sure we're in our home tab over about halfway across the screen and you'll see there's a formatting box. We want to format that as a percent. When I click on percent, note it changes it to 1%. Didn't change the value. All it did is round it off. But typically I want to see that displayed two or three decimal places. So I'm going to click on this box that's increased decimal. Just click on it twice and I'll see that displayed as two decimal places. Go back to standard deviation. Now standard deviations are a little bit different. With standard deviations if I want to convert it to monthly I have to divide by the square root of 12 instead of divide by 12. If I wanted it quarterly it would be divided by the square root of 4. So whenever we convert standard deviations from an annual to a periodic basis we divide by the square root of the number of periods. So equals B4 divided by SQRT, which is the square root function in Excel, 12 for 12 months in a year, and we get 0 0.046188. Again, a decimal, let's convert that to percent. Click the percent button, increase decimals, and now displays our monthly standard deviation as 4.62%. The next thing I want to do is actually generate my random returns. Remember the idea of the Monte Carlo simulation is we want random returns and we want many different scenarios. So I'm going to set those up in sheet 2. Just click on that. Now sometimes it's easier to have these sheets labeled. So if I double click, I can just write in random returns. And now it's really easy to see what this sheet 2 represents. Now, I want 100 trials in my situation, 30 years, so this now needs to go to 360. You can do a longer time period. You might want 35 years, or maybe you want to retire early and you want 20 years. Maybe you want 500 trials, 200 trials, whatever, you can set it up. But for this example, we're going to use 30 years and 100 trials. So let's do 30 years first, that's 360 months. Instead of typing in 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way down to 360, which would take forever, I'm going to use the Smart Drag feature in Excel. Notice my cursor right now is a little white plus sign. As I move it to the bottom right hand corner, it changes to a black plus sign. Open, close. Now what I want to do is Smart Drag by left click and hold, so left click, hold, and drag it down. You can see that number is changing as I go down 13, 14, 15. I want to drag that all the way down to 360. So now I've got 360. Stop it there. Do the same thing with trials. I said I wanted 100 random scenarios. So highlight trial 1, trial 2, Move my cursor to the bottom right hand corner till it fills in black plus sign. Left click, hold, drag across until I get trial 100. Now the next thing I'm going to introduce is the idea of freezing panes. And if you look, once I start moving around here, get into cell CQ31, it's easy to lose track of what trial I'm in or what row or what month I'm in. So an easy way to do that is to use the freeze panes command. Go to cell B2. The reason we want B2 is freeze panes. It's going to freeze the rows above where we are 
and the columns to the left of where we are. So we just want the top row and the first column. So cell B2 is where we want to go. Jump over here to the View tab. Freeze panes. Click on that. Now you can see there's a little plus sign, or not a plus sign, a little line underneath the column, a little line to the right of the rows here, and that's just telling us those are always going to be visible. You can go across, you can go down, and we can always see those headings, the column headings and row headings, and know where we are in the spreadsheet. Now they aren't locked, I could go change them, they're just always going to be visible. So I want to go now up to B2 put in my random return. Remember we were using log normal random return so the formula for that is equals log norm dot inv. That sets up our log normal distribution. We need to now look up a random spot on that. So we're going to use rand. just generates a random number between 0 and 1 which is going to get plugged into the log normal cumulative distribution function. Set up our mean. Our mean was our monthly average return that we were expecting. That's over here in sheet 1. Cell C3. Next we need comma and standard deviation so let me put a comma in there. And now we need our standard deviation, which is in cell C4. Click on that. Last thing we need to do is subtract off 1, which is just a placeholder. And that's going to allow us to have a return instead of just a log normal number. So here we see point, negative 0 0.00545. That's a negative 0.545%. So let's go ahead and convert that to a percent. Again, just makes it easier to see. Go to the Home tab, percent, give us a couple decimal places, negative 0.54%. Now I need to fill those up. I've just got one random return. I need 100 trials, and I need 30 years worth of random returns. So I need to drag these down to all 30 years or 360 months. Notice when I do that, I'm getting num instead of a number here. Also note my random number change. The way random numbers are calculated in Excel, they'll be recalculated every time you do some formula. So they'll be updating quite a bit. Don't worry about that. We can lock them down later if you want to. But more importantly, let's worry about fixing that number. This is the idea of the absolute versus relative cell references. When I originally started this, I told Excel that my return was in sheet 1, cell C3, and my standard deviation was in sheet 1, cell C4. But Excel changed that as I copied my numbers down. It's instead going over one column, down one row. Go to sheet 1, go over one column, down one row, and it's plugging down my return into C5 here. That's not where my return is. My return is over in C3. So I need to use an absolute cell reference to lock that down. And I do that by putting in an anchor, which is a dollar sign. Dollar sign in front of the C anchors the column. Dollar sign in front of the 3 anchors the row. Same thing for my standard deviation. Anchor that into cell C4 by dollar sign in front of the C, dollar sign in front of the 4. Now when I've got that set up, I can drag it down and I'm getting my percent returns, my random returns, which is what I want. So just go ahead and drag those all the way down for 360 months. Now I want to drag that over for 100 trials. And now I've got 100 scenarios of 360 months worth of random returns generated with a log normal distribution. I'm going to stop here on this video and in the last section we're going to convert these returns and our initial contribution, our monthly contributions to actual dollar values.